Okay, so I think it's time. Hello, welcome everyone to our presentation. I'm Simon, and with my friend Ignacio today, we want to show you a feature of Zool that is surprisingly not well known among users. So stay with us to find out how you can move your jobs debugging to a whole new level. So if you're completely new to Zool, um, we're going to give you a big uh, high overview. Um, in case you need to deep dive into the subject, uh, Simon has a very, very good talk from the Ompe Info Summit in 2019 in Shanghai. If you want to, you can sc scan the QR code and uh, you're good to go. So what is Zool? Um, essentially, Zool is a CI CD system. One of its main features is the gating mechanism that automates the merging process ensuring the application is tested properly. It relies on Ansible roles and playbooks, and it supports cross-project dependencies. Users may specify change on a different project and repository that is known to Zool, and it will take that uh, into account. And last but not least, um, Zool is used on OpenDev, which is the largest open source CI system in the world. OK, so for motivation for our talk, let me give you some background story. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can all relate. You all know this. There is a work you have to do. So like a feature to implement or something. You spend a few days working on it, and then a miracle comes. Bam. After some time, it starts to work. Great, you can now close all your 50 browser tabs. All you need to do is to push your code for review, and you are done. But then, suddenly, a wild colleague appears only to point out there is a failure in the CI system. Some tests are not passing. And what then? I mean, clearly, you did everything right because you tested it on your computer, right? Of course you did. So that must be a, obviously a problem with the CI system again, as always. What can you do in such case? Well, you can go to the extreme solutions like, like the presented in the slide, but the better approach would, might be to fix actually the issue. And you might do it in traditional way, like you try to reproduce it, and after some time you will eventually success. But we will present you another feature of Zool that will make it easier for you. So joking aside, um, the auto hold feature is a very important for us engineers. Um, testing environments often differ from the development ones. So despite our best efforts, this is the way it is. So you have many different in sober versions, hardware revisions, firmware releases, and on top of that, many different configurations of all of the above. This makes reproducing the issue quite a difficult task. So get it into the test environment might be the best solution. So yeah, another quick introduction from Zool. If you are a Zool user, the typical operation as how you see it is usually there comes some request either by some recheck or you just submit a change to review from a Garrett usually, and it's catched by the Zool scheduler service here number one. And this service, with the help of node pool service, allocates a node, some runner, where the Zool executor process comes and executes your job steps. After that, everything is cleaned up, like the runner node is removed, and all you can do is you browse the logs within the Zool web user interface. This is where the neat feature of Zool called Auto Holds comes. What it does, it offers you a way to prever preserve a runner node for a specific amount of time. So if there is a failure in your build, that node is not cleaned up, and uh, you can get there for a specific amount of time. What is not worth to notice is that it's not something really new in Zool itself. 
it was actually, if you look at the dates in the commits, it was actually implemented a lot of years ago during the de development of Zool version 3. But what's important is quite recently, about a year ago, it was available over the Zool web interface. So it is now more conveniently accessible for all also developers. We don't need to use the Zool CLI system, uh, cli uh, CLI client to access it. And this is, this is very convenient. And yeah, here we originally wanted to present you some demo, but uh, because of the lightning talk form of our presentation, we are not as brave as yesterday keynote speakers to do a demo in eight minutes, so we went with a slightly safer approach. So hence, I would like to welcome you to a quasi-demonstration performed by Ignacio. Thanks, Shimon. Um, so how do you go about enabling an auto hole for one of your builds? You navigate to one your Zool instance URL and you're greeted with this page. First things first, you need to log in, top right corner, and then once you do so, you can navigate to the auto holds tab. This is what the auto hold tab looks like. Right now we have no auto holds enabled, so we have the no auto holds found message displayed. And let's go ahead and create one of the auto holes by clicking on the create request button. This leads us to the configuration page for our auto hold. And the fields pointed by the red arrows, uh, you have to fill those in, project name, job name, change, reference. Then you give a reason for your auto hold request. This can be debugging X issue or something like that. And then how many times you want to hold the node. Then last, you indicate for how long in seconds you want this build to be held. And then you hit create. If everything goes right, you go back to the uh, auto holds page and you are greeted with your auto hold listed there. By clicking on the request ID, you are directed to your specific auto hold that you just requested. This is what it looks like. This is, uh, gives you very basic information. I just wanna point out the important bit is that by pointed by point five, um, since we haven't triggered the, the request yet, we have a zero out of one. And then at the bottom, we see uh, the message that we have no triggers for our uh, request. So now is the time to either uh, take your uh, job and trigger it or wait for a periodic job to trigger. Once that happens, and if everything goes right, now your job and your auto hold trigger has worked. Now it's one out of one, pointed out by 0.7. And uh, now we have to click and navigate to our build by clicking the ID for our build. That's point number eight on the slide. And this leads us to the page for our build. Important point is that next to the failed message, we see a very small pin icon. That means that the auto hold has worked and our build is being held for us. So we only have one thing left, and is find out the IP of the node that is running our build. To do so, we navigate to the logs tab. That's number 10 on the slide. And here, we have to go into the Zool info directory, and then there you will find your inventory.yaml. That uh, will be number 11. And on that file, you want to look for the Ansible host variable. That variable is holding the IP of your node. All you have left is just SSH into the node, and you're good to go. Okay. So this way, you have a nice and clear solution to have access a real shell environment inside your test environment. And 
please note that all this mechanism do is it delays the cleanup. It uh, delays the inevitable, but it does not set any authentication by itself. So it's up to you and your job steps to set up some password or SSH access key on the machine so you can access it. And there are two like, not downsides, but limitations also to consider when uh, considering this feature. One is that currently there is no way to extend that the auto hold the hold that is already in progress. So if you might expect that the debugging will take a little more time, please consider that in advance to increase the time when you create an auto hold request. And second, more important limitation for some people is that it only works for now with the, it doesn't work with the container uh, Zool drivers, notebook drivers. So if you, if your jobs are using virtual machines, we are perfectly fine to use it. But for containers, we are missing uh, routers, creation, and stuff to the containers. So that doesn't work. However, for case of like virtual machines or bare metal hosts, it's much better alternative than the other solutions that we commonly nowadays see people use by, for example, injecting some additional debug tasks or like remove PDB instance inside the jobs because of the points mentioned in the slides. And yeah, here we reach the conclusions. So as a summary for takeaway for you, if you didn't hear about Zool before, please read about it. It's a really good CI-CD system. And as in many CI-CD systems, the runner nodes live only as long as the job duration takes. But with the auto hold feature, you may have a clear and nice way to extend the time how long the runner lives, and it can give you a additional time for debugging any nasty issues. So don't hesitate to ask your Zool instance admin if you have one about the auto hold feature today. And that's it for us. If you want to grab the slides, there is the QR code and the link. You can download them. And yeah, thank you for coming and listening to our presentation. And because of the lighting to form and the time really short, I think we don't have opportunity for questions here. But we are we welcome you to ask and catch us and ask us for any questions and doubts. We will be here near the entrance to the marketplace. So come and ask us about Zool. Thank you. Thank you.